What's up, guys? Huge congrats on the show. Uh, you've had one season, now you get the lovely second season. Yes. Which is fantastic. Thank you. Um, just wanted to ask, begin with uh, the first season and how kind of you were first told about the success of the show and that you were being picked up for a second season. Did you know at the end of season one that you were going to come back or was it kind of a little bit afterwards? That... No, you don't know. No. You don't know. Um, when did we find out? We found out when um, it was the TCAs. It was, a, it was the beginning night and it was actually kind of a cool thing. Because we found out the morning um, before we had like a big party that we got picked up. So the night of finding this great news out, we got to all kind of be together. So that was a cool. You know, you, you sort of get an impression because, you know, it's it, often it's about whether the numbers get sustained. And if the numbers sustain at a certain level, then then it's 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 kind of, it's not inevitable by any stretch of the imagination. But but. We had a sense and a feeling that you know it was going quite well, and we were getting very nice reviews from some of the quality press, and uh, which was really nice and sort of you know makes you feel good about what you're doing. So, so you, we had a sense that it was going to happen. So, it's just very nice when you finally get. And actually, you know, the interesting thing is you get told that it's been picked up, right? But none of that means anything until you get a letter from from the big bosses. Like, it was called your pickup letter. Mm -hmm. But you don't get that until about three weeks before you travel. And only when you get that letter does your lawyer go, congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> so they still keep you on tenterhooks. Right? Yeah, because, you know, because they could say no at any point. Or yeah. your character might be written out or, you know. That's the worst part. When your show gets picked up, but you don't go back. Yeah. <laughs> so we're grateful that that yes, didn't Yes, so happen. it's very nice. <laughs> yeah. So when, I mean, going back to the beginning of this one, how was this, was this sold to you as, did you know it was going to be an X-Men Marvel thing or, because some of these shows, when I spoke to people before, they're told that it's one thing and then when they turn up, it's actually, oh, it's something to do with this massive property. I mean, were you guys told at the beginning this was going to be X-Men, that it was going to be connected to everything or were you told it was something secret? Yes, um, yes, yes and no. It's, it's part of the X-Universe. We're not really allowed to talk about the X Men because yeah. the X Men is is its own thing. Yeah. Uh, so, w because Marvel very much want to keep X Men as the movies, uh, we can't be X Men, and we can't have X Men in our show because it dilutes the property. You know. So. They can make it of the X world. So we knew that, didn't we? Yeah, and we have little Easter eggs in the show, though. They, they, yes. have, they will add like little, like, yeah. you can see like coffee tables around and they'll have the X's on them or like certain. Or, you know, for instance, there's a character, thing. there's a character in that is mentioned last season who is called Risman, and that name means something to mm. all the comic book fans from the X Men comics. So, so there's very specific little pieces, of, and the people who follow that stuff are. You know, very obsessive, and they know real details, and 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 I won't even recognise an Easter egg in the script, but but one of our friends will tell us. It's okay. This I think is... your episode names have are written so this that they have an M. X. So this it's year it's M for mutants. Oh, it's so M for mutants, right? Little... Okay. So I, I wonder if if we do go another season, I wonder if they'll change the change the letter again. Mm. Lots of stuff. We'll it's a big. It's one of these. It's because of comic books. There's so many facets, yeah. and it's changed so many. But over it's also the, over I the really enjoy well. that aspect of it. You know, the the because because there is there is a sense of enjoyment that the audience get back. You know that 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 they're being listened to and respected and and loved, and that they're trying to put things in there for people to try and see or not see. Mm -hmm. You know, and and so. There, that, that aspect of it is actually really fun. Oh, yeah. Uh, the great thing about this show that I, I particularly like was, um, obviously in the X-Men movies you get the X-Men, whereas in this, and you never really see like pockets of how it's affecting, say, the public or people yes. at large, you kind of get the enclosed X-Men. Yes. How was it for you guys going into these characters, knowing it was, as you say, part of the universe, but also that it was showcasing a kind of bigger picture that maybe we haven't seen? before and that the fans have obviously taken to given yeah. the ratings and stuff like that. I mean, that, I think that we've had this conversation many times. It's kind of our favorite part of the show. So that in the X-Men movies, you um, kind of go on this journey with these superheroes saving the world. But in our show, um, we're just trying to survive and we're trying to make it as mutants because people see the mutant gene as a disability and they're afraid of it. So, of course, when you're afraid of something, your first response is to eliminate mm. it instead of trying to um, coexist with mutants. Like if you had a moth in your apartment. Yes, of course. <laughs> Just shut up. <laughs> a 
Okay, I had a moth in my apartment. We live in the same building. I had to have him come and get one because me, because moths scare me, and I don't know and how to handle them. And therefore, she will kill them. So, so <laughs> rather than befriend them. I'm a hypocrite. Which is a so, great metaphor. <laughs> exactly. I have the same thing with my housemate. She hates spiders. And yeah. I'll get a text at work, or I'll yeah. be in the next room, and she'll say, "You need to come and." See, take spiders, spiders are misunderstood. So. <laughs> yeah. Like, like like mutants. Um. The no, there is there is a you know by the very nature of what we do, it has a sort of mirror. To, it holds a mirror up to society, and it and it and it's, you know, it's a sort of parallel universe in which we have human characters. And you know, I mentioned earlier, and we were talking about it. And as I was saying, as I was speaking, I was kind of like one of the most interesting characters in the show is Amy, who 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 is you know, um, who plays my wife, Caitlin, because she's the only human. Like if you look at that poster. She's the only human there now. And she, so she is very much the sort of, you know, without being too wanky, um, <laughs> if I'm allowed to say that. <laughs> um, That's fine. You know, like the, the Brechtian thing of having somebody who represents the, the audience mm. on stage at all times, you know, in a way that is Amy because she's the human that, that is having to live with this, all this otherness and therefore is reflecting what the audience is living, you know. Mm -hmm. it's, it's an interesting thing. Oh, yeah. How have you found going into season two? Because obviously you've had it with True Blood, obviously, where in season two and beyond, you can kind of expand the mythology and the character yeah. and everything. And then the first season, you guys have had to go on the run and everything else. And at the end of season one into season two, there's kind of this fractured state between all these people. We, how happy were you when you got the script that the scripts in season two kind of delved more into the to characters and the family and kind of expanded the world beyond season one? I mean, personally, I, I think that what, what's interesting is that, you know, if you, if, if you think about it again in terms of the real world, it's almost like Andy has gone off with a cult. Mm -hmm. he's, 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 our, he's our kid, he's our child who has been indoctrinated and taken away from us and, and, and has chosen to live this life that we think is wrong, right? So, so you know, so one can sort of understand what that would feel like and therefore we're sort of on the run trying to now he's on the run and we're trying to like bring him back and find him and I think that's a really interesting idea because we are also on the run and but he's like taking his his um belief or his or his you know one could say religion or whatever way further than than we would have wanted him to so because those guys that faction believe completely in mutant power and we believe in mutant and human integration you know so it's it, i think w the way that we're dealing with that's interesting and we're hunting for for you know what the bad guys you know if if you like like the top the, the blue guys and we're the nice warm color below <laughs> <laughs> good and evil right yeah. on a poster yeah there you go <laughs> um i guess obviously you know you said about it being connected and not connected but you've had all of the, the X-Men kind of producers and everything on board from the beginning as well. I mean, was there, was there taken at the beginning, this is going to be X-Men but not X-Men, but we still want to explore things that maybe we haven't explored before, but kind of go off by itself? Because these, these are characters that we haven't seen before, so you guys are going in fresh. You know, it's not you becoming Wolverine or you becoming Cyclops, or uh, yeah. Cyclops, Cyclops, should I say. <laughs> um, but it must be great to navigate a space that hasn't been seen on film or on TV before in, the, in this world. Yeah, I mean, um, we do have characters in the show that are from the movies and the comics, so I think that we have a good mixture of it because, uh, like, our characters are from the comics, so we get to, me and Percy kind of just get to redo a new version of it. Um, but what, one of the coolest parts is, I think, seeing these characters not as the superhero versions, but seeing them as normal people growing into the superheroes that they become in the future. Um, and kind of that's what we're trying to do in season two is, really start developing our characters, developing our powers. It's, it's, pretty exci it's pretty exciting to see everybody kind of evolving as a team. When um, Brian Singer first sat down with Matt Nix and they were talking about a sort of X-Men world story, they were both talking about movies that they love and one of the movies that they talked about is a fantastic film. I think it's 88 or 89. It's called Running on Empty, Sidney Lumet. Oh yeah. Wonderful movie with mm -hmm. Judd Hirsch and a mm -hmm. young River Phoenix. Yep. And that, that film is about two political activists, the, mo the mother and father, who are wanted by the government for 
crimes against the state that they believe they believe wholeheartedly in. And the two kids, the daughter and the son, are being dragged around America wanting normality, right? And they both talked about a great love of that movie. And so what they decided to try and do with The Gifted was running on empty set in the mutant world, you know? So this, this normal, seemingly normal family uh, on the run. And it's an interesting thing, isn't it? Because I love that movie. And, and so when you think about that as a template, it's about humanity as mm. opposed to specialness. It's about survival, you know. And, and I, think our, our, I think at the heart of what our show is, it's about survival and keeping the family together as opposed to saving the world, you know. And saving the world is a byproduct of keeping the family together, which I think is a nice, is, a, is an interesting way of telling the same story that's already been told. You know? Yeah. I just finally wanted to ask you if you obviously people were, are very excited to see season two. I mean, are you guys game for, for more if it continues? Because I can imagine this would go on. Uh, and do you guys know, you might not even know this, but obviously Fox and Marvel and Disney are kind of yeah. coming together at yeah. some point. Have they given you any, any indication of how it might change the series or whether they want to continue down kind of the same path and keep it? I hope we get Disney tickets. That's my biggest goal for this merger. <laughs> it's always been a passion of mine to go to Disneyland for free, so. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's what we're all concerned about is her love of yes. Disney, so we so, want to get I'm really Disneyland happy about tickets. it, yeah. Um, we don't know, I mean, I don't think they know how it shakes mm. down, you know. There's a, you know, Disney, Fox and Marvel will, will own the X-Men universe as well, obviously, so the X-Men universe will probably come back, and, and I, who knows, we don't know, and it, and, you know, it's, I think there's a lot of story here. I think there's a, I think there's, I think, you know, what's, what's, what I find fascinating is, you know, you couldn't write what's happening in America right now if you sat down and, with a blank piece of paper and, you know, whether you believe, whatever side of the political spectrum you sit, it doesn't matter. You wouldn't be able to sit down and, and, and write down what has happened in mm -hmm. the last few months. Um, so, as, as for our show reflecting what's happening, we sort of put out there what's in the world and, and yet it does somehow reflect what's happening. And I think that's really interesting. And I think while we can t continue to do that, but also be entertainment, then, then I think there is a lot of story to be told here. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!